This morning's New York Post has a page one story with uh, Dylan Farrow, of course, uh, one of the uh, children of uh, Mia Farrow and Woody Allen, who has accused Woody Allen years ago of molesting her. And there's been a flurry of stories back in the news about this. Three actors in Woody Allen's new film are donating their pay to anti-abuse charities. And uh, every time Woody Allen makes a film these days, it sort of brings out the pro or the anti-Woody Allen forces. Alec Baldwin uh, is uh, calling the actors who are renunciating Woody Allen unfair and sad. Uh, And I wanted to invite a pal of mine on uh, who has been friends with Woody Allen for 40 years. And I've been friends with Steve Stolyer for 25 years or more since we worked on WKRP together many years ago. And Steve uh, it was in an unusual position for a number of years uh, towards the end of Groucho Marx's life. He actually worked in the house with Groucho. And Aaron Fleming, he wrote a very, very compelling book called Raised Eyebrows about that experience that is now going to be made into a movie by Rob Zombie, by the way. And uh, wow. I invited... Uh, Steve, to come on and talk to us about it because he has a different perspective on this. Uh, And it's a pleasure to welcome back to the show, Steve Stolyer. Steve, good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much, Doug. I appreciate you coming on to talk about this. Uh, Now, I want to give a little backstory, and this is a very personal story for you in a lot of ways, not only because you've been friends with Woody for a long time, but also because your late wife, uh, Angelique, uh, right. was a victim of rather horrific sexual abuse as a child over a long period of time. Uh, true on both counts. Um, I, uh, it does put me in a, in a strange and, and seemingly conflicting position, but it really isn't when you take a look at it. Um, my, my late wife um, endured horrific, as you say, sexual abuse at the hands of her father and her brother over a period of many years. They, they both ended up owning up to it, by the way. And I had certainly a first, a first row seat at what the incalculable effects are of child sexual abuse um, in adulthood because uh, my wife was often hospitalized for suicidal depression the horrible feelings of shame and revulsion that come out. Um, I have absolutely no sympathy for actual pedophiles. Uh, I don't care that they had rough childhoods or whatever happened to them. As Angelique used to say, it may help explain why they do what they do. It does not excuse it. So uh, my my usual approach to uh, my feelings about pedophiles is that I would like to use them as human pinatas. So I say that to preface the uh, and explain the fact that uh, unlike uh, a lot of guys who get get called, you know, part of the boys' club or enablers, and you don't know what it's like, you don't know how horrible sexual abuse is. I do. I uh, well, you I lived with you lived with well. uh, the consequences of it uh, at yeah, a very we personal. Were, I mean, we were we were together for twenty years and married for seventeen, and and uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of our marriage was greatly impacted by the repercussions of the abuse. Um, okay, so now, now with that said, Steve, uh, yeah. let's let's pivot to. Your friendship with uh, Mr. Allen, I, I never actually asked you this, but when you worked in Groucho's house, the world used to come to Groucho Marx's house. Even in his dotage, he was still an icon, and he had been friends with Woody and Dick Cavett, who you've also been very good friends with for many, many years, was a close friend of both Groucho's and Woody Allen's. Is that the right. nexus of where you met uh, Woody? Yes, it, uh, it was. I started a correspondence with Dick Cavett when I was uh, working for Groucho, and we kind of hit it off. And then when Groucho died, I figured that Cavett would uh, there wouldn't be any real reason for him to stay in touch with me because I was no longer a pipeline into into Groucho's house. 
And then the week that Groucho died, Cavett called me and said, listen, I hope just because Groucho's gone, we're not going to lose touch. And by the way, I hope you don't mind, but I've shown some of your letters to Woody, and he says they're very well written. And I sort of, you know, drained the urine out of my shoes. The idea that <laughs> yeah, Dick wanted sure. to be my friend and that Woody Allen said. So when I, I moved to New York in 82 uh, to write for Dick Cavett, I met uh, Woody Allen there. And then uh, when I moved back to L.A. in the mid-80s to, to write for Bill Dial, whom you and I both knew well and worked with, um, Woody and I st- started a correspondence with actual letters, some handwritten and most on his <clears throat> on his Olympic portable Olympia portable t- manual typewriter that he's had since high school. Um, and uh, I spent time with him when he was out here working on uh, Cafe Society, and we have. You know, it's very gratifying to me. He was he really enjoyed uh, Raised Eyebrows, my book about Groucho, and has been kind of a big brotherly, supportive fellow. Has always been very flattering and gratifying. But frankly, that isn't that isn't good enough when it comes to child abuse, because I have no interest in throwing my late wife under the bus just because I know. Woody Allen. And, you know, I should say that he does not know I'm doing this. I'm not, I haven't been, you know, sent from the Woody Allen. No, I, I, that I can verify to... because I called you and asked you if you'd be willing to do this uh, for us. Right. And the reason I asked you is because, as you know, Leanne Tweeden sitting right here, we've been up to our eyeballs in the hashtag Me Too um, yep. moment in the sun. And one of the concerns... And the, ha- and the hashtag... The, ha- the Me Too and the Time's Up thing is long overdue right. and is very welcome and very healthy. And boy, if my wife were around, she would be very pleased to see the reckoning that is going on with so many people that, that have gotten away with so much for so long. It's actually very healthy and very welcome. My concern is the collateral damage being done to people who are demonstrably innocent of what they're being blamed or for. even what is the standard for defending yourself or giving an opportunity for somebody who was accused anonymously in particular which is a concern that all of us have shared including leon we've all discussed this we, you know uh, in your american law you have a right to be to confront your accuser but in many cases the accusers are anonymous that's not the case obviously with the Woody Allen story. We're talking with Steve Stollier. His book, by the way, Raised Eyebrows, is still available. It's a great read. Uh, Steve, right. let's talk about... Uh, I don't want to get into all the graphic accusations. Everybody knows this, that uh, yeah. Dylan Farrell accused Woody Allen of having molested her in, a, in an attic in uh, Mia Farrow's country house in Connecticut many years ago. Right, and 92. And this was investigated in great detail by the state of Connecticut. It was investigated in great detail by two thorough investigations. One of them was a six-month-long inquiry by the Yale New Haven Hospital Sex, uh, Child Sexual Abuse Division. And by the way, that was who Mia insisted be the group of people that examined Dylan and conduct this, and the, and the judge agreed to her choice. And it was also investigated by the New York State Social Services for for 14 months. And both of them concluded that Dylan had not been molested, but that she had been heavily, heavily coached. And, uh, you know, there's so much mis- and disinformation out there now. I read about... uh, you know, he was he was he was arrested. He was acquitted. Uh, he had a contentious divorce with Mia Farrow. They were never married. Um, but no, no charges were ever brought against him. Not because there was a conspiracy of men to keep the truth from the light of day, but because there was no evidence of it. Uh, Linda Fairstein was director of New York Sex Crimes Unit for 28 years. She was shocked that Mia's tape of Dylan's confession was in 11 edited segments over a period of time in different locations. One 
that had Dylan nude in a bathtub and the other with her topless reciting what happened, each ending with my poor, poor mother. Uh, And Linda Fairstein has no reason to believe the abuse occurred. And there's been a lot that has come forth from Moses Farrow, who is uh, a brother, and he's now 39, and uh, of all things, a uh, marriage and family therapist. And he has been quite outspoken, although unfortunately it doesn't get nearly the coverage that the Dylan story does. But he has talked about how Mia Farrow's, um, she demanded total obedience and uh, that her method was coaching, drilling, scripting, rehearsing, and that she drummed it into him to hate Woody Allen. She was in constant fear that secrets would be revealed about her abusive parenting um, and destroy the narrative of this selfless woman who adopted all these abandoned children. And I, I, should, I hasten to add that I am not accusing Dylan Farrow of lying, which may sound really weird. Um, I believe that she is unquestionably the victim of child abuse, but that the abuser's initials are Mia Farrow. And uh, and the argument had always been that this was revenge for Woody having the affair with uh, Sun Yi, and that right. and it's really a cleave in the family because obviously you have Ronan Farrow and Dylan Farrow on one side with Mia, and then you've got uh, Moses uh, Farrow uh, uh, sort of and, defending and Sun Yi. Sun Yi has, has also said in in Eric Lax's new book. Um, start to finish Woody Allen and the Art of Movie Making, she says that Mia had a fierce temper. She picked on easy, vulnerable targets. She often kicked and hit her. And in fact, she, you know, Sunni credits Woody Allen with saving, literally saving her life by taking her out of the compound. Now, Steve, what do you make, for for those of us who have no personal relationship with any of these people, and we're just right. bombarded with, every time Woody makes a movie a year, and every time he makes a movie, there's going to be another flurry of headlines, either pro or con, and I, I think that most people just look at the story and we you know from my personal perspective i will tell you that my experience of covering these stories over 20 years is that abusers tend to be habitual abusers and it is unusual yeah. that someone would abuse one person starting in their 50s and then there'd be never anybody else would ever come well, forward with a an allegation if, of abuse if anyone would have been uh uh, uh forgiven for for siding with an accusing child, it would have been my wife. And yet back when this happened, uh, when the whole investigation happened and all the headlines, which is, you know, now 25 years ago, which is about a generation and a half who has grown up not remembering this and only knowing what they've seen in recent years, my wife thoroughly read everything that was available and came to the conclusion that Woody Allen did not do this, that you don't suddenly start and just as suddenly stop molesting very young children in your late 50s, and that it was, you know, it's such a common ploy when there is a custody battle for the wife or girlfriend to throw that horrific accusation out. But I do believe, I think Dylan would probably pass a lie detector. Well, we now. saw I this believe with... That she believes it. We saw this with the McMartin preschool trial, uh, yeah, you know, right. on a grand scale. Right. Listen, Steve, I, I wanted uh, you to have the opportunity to tell this side of it because all of the headlines seem to go the other way. Right. And oh, I knew can but I just say a, an, a, another thing? That, that Mia's brother... John is doing a 10-year prison stint for a 2013 conviction for multiple counts of molesting two boys. And she has stood by Roman Polanski's side, saying he was a loyal friend and important to all people in a letter to the probation board. So her outrage is very selective. Yeah, so, it's... Uh, uh, you know, it, he, he's, Woody Allen is just, he's getting a rotten deal. And I just, I wanted people to know that it is... It, this stemmed from me as what Dick Cavett calls pathological vengeance because of what happened 25 years ago 
where, where she said to Woody, you took my daughter, I'm going to take yours. And she said, I've got something planned for you. And he said, what are you going to do, shoot me? And she said, no, this is worse. And then the next day was when the allegations of Dylan abuse happened. So it's, it's and, it, and, and all of the actors and actresses who were lining up to renounce and denounce Woody Allen, it's like all they're hearing is the Dylan side. And I know it asks a lot of people to, to look beneath the surface. And, but, you know, you scroll through your news feed and you're not going to go check further than that. And it's like the people who don't bother checking Snopes. They just send a blast email to everyone with yeah. whatever story they receive. Hey, well, Steve, thanks for coming on and talking to us about it. I appreciate you sharing this. I know a lot of it is very personal for you. Steve Stollier, yes, the is. author of Raised Eyebrows. And uh, when the movie comes out, we'll certainly not keep that a secret either.